By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a game with my mono red revised deck against Hank, who's playing with a blue and red combo deck. He's playing Land Equilibrium. And I believe it also splashes some black in there. Let's let's see what's going to happen. I'm playing a Mana Vault here on turn one. My tactic is simple. Getting Mana Vaults out, play big creatures, play fireballs, and just kill my opponent as fast as I can. And Hank has that Volcanic Island and a Mox in play. And there is a Fire Elemental, a 5-4. So my plan is working out great so far. And let's see if Hank um, can respond to this. He basically has to remove this Fire Elemental ASAP. Because that's a 5-4 big elemental coming your way. I'm taking a damage here from the vault. And attacking him for 5. Brilliant. He's taking the damage. He's going to 15. Let's see what happens next. He's got an underground sea. He's playing a city of brass. Taking a damage from the city. And playing a land equilibrium. So that's, that's the deck. That's what the decks uh, build around. Together with mana and vortex. And land equilibrium says. Whenever any opponent puts a land in, into play if he or she controls at least as much land as you do he, he or she sacrifices a land so if I would play a land right now I would have to sacrifice another land but going back to the game it looks like I've as, uh, put in another swing with my fire elemental Hank is on 9 life so I mean a little advice for Hank get rid of that fire elemental but can he and he's playing a time twister Oh, and I'm showing a Shivan, so I had a Shivan in my hand, but I couldn't untap that Mana Vault. And uh, this is nice. The Time Twister, and Hank is going to look for answers. I believe he's playing with the Abyss. But even if he would draw an Abyss, he couldn't play out an Abyss. He doesn't have enough mana to do that. And e even if, if he does, then still... He needs to, you know, he gets another five during combat. I mean, he would still be alive. It would be at four, but it's not ideal. You want to have like a mace or swords, but he doesn't play with white. Playing a Mox Pearl here. So maybe he does. Maybe he splashed it in. Who knows? Oh, of course, that can work. Chaos Orb. That can work. He's flipping the orb, taking a damage again, being on eight and using his Volcanic for my Fire Elemental. Oh, and I believe he misses the flip. Oh, that's brutal. I actually missed two very important flips not too long ago in a tournament. Very frustrating. Sometimes you, you flip too quickly. Sometimes you're just not focused. Sometimes you're a little nervous. It's quite strange how that works. Anyway, putting in another five damage with that fire elemental. And that fire elemental is doing a great job. And there's a fireball and I'm winning this first game. Wow, I mean, this was really Fire Elemental all the way. And let's see what's, ha what's going to happen after sideboarding. And we are going to game number two. Game number two is about this to start with uh, Hank on the play. After that great win by the Fire Elemental. And I'm always a big fan of flavor. I just, I just like it to cast... Fire Elemental and then later in the game a Fire Bowl. I mean, I would have loved if I would have drawn my Wall of Fire, which is also in the deck, which is completely useless against his combo deck because I believe Hank is playing with no creatures. So I'm sure I boarded that out. I'm pretty sure we're going to see some Red Elemental Blasts and some Blue Elemental Blasts. And that's a great start for me, but Hank has a Library of Alexandria drawing an extra card there. But I have a lot of mana there. And Hank now knows that, hey, he has big creatures. So hopefully he has an answer. And he's counting his cards. Am I going to play a mox or not? It seems that he's thinking about it. It's always difficult with the Library of Alexandria. Um, if you want to keep it active, you have to play a little bit more passive. I believe it's definitely worth it. Um, but on the other hand, maybe he needs his second blue to counter. And there are four mana. And... There is a Dragon Whelp. So Dragon Whelp is a 2-3 flying creature that you can pump up that has fire breathing basically built in. There is a blue Elemental Blast. So that's something from the sideboard there. And I'm sure that's going to help 
uh, Hank because it allows them to just simply remove creatures from the game quickly without needing Chaos Orb or an Abyss or whatever. It's just removal. And it also works as a counter spell, so it can also stop the fireballs. So it's ideal against my deck. The good news for me is now that his um, library is being deactivated. So that's great. And he's playing a Felwer Stone. So he decides not to wait. And he's playing... Okay, that makes sense. Now I get it why he doesn't wait. And he's playing a Demonic Tutor. And that's never really good news. And I'm sure he boarded in a lot of creature hate. And maybe some extra counter spells against direct damage. So there I go. I go and untap. And again, I've got a lot of mana. So hopefully I can cast something like a Sheevan. Okay, that's a Goblin Balloon Brigade. It's a 1-1 one, one Goblin Flyer. It's not very impressive. And of course, we just had uh, Hank using that tutor. So I'm curious to see what he's uh, looked up. Four mana, and there's a land equilibrium again. Okay, so. And that means that I cannot play another land because Hank only has two lands in play. I have three lands in play. So if I play an, an extra land, I have to also sacrifice a land. And there is the fire elemental again. Our big friend from game number one is coming back to do some more damage. And I wonder if Hank has an answer for the Fire Elemental this time, because he's on 19, but with a 5-4 Elemental on the field, that can change very rapidly. And there is a Recall drawing three cards, and I believe activating the library again. I'm not sure. Yes, it is activating, so that's card number eight now. And of course he tutored for the Recall, that would make sense. And that's great playing a Meek Stone, that's very smart. Meek Stone means that creatures with the power greater than 2 cannot untap anymore. And he's also playing a Relic Barrier. And Relic Barrier is a big enemy of the Mana Vault, but it looks like Hank is not tapping my Mana Vault. So that's great news for me so far. And I'm swinging in with 6 damage. Tapping 2 land. Playing a Shatter. And I believe I just played a land, so that's not... Or did I have four land already? I believe I just played a land, so that's not correct. And there's the play from Hank that I talked about earlier. He is tapping my Mana Vault. It's a very good play. And Mana Vault is basically useless now, and it's just going to hurt me with that Relic Barrier on the other side. But obviously, I had to shatter the Meek Stone uh, because I only get one damage, but I get to untap my Fire Elemental and hit him for a lot more. But remember... Uh, Hank has that active library of Alexander, so he's drawing more cards than me. So he's playing out of Volcanic, he's played out of Black Vice, he's playing out of Howling Mine, and he's playing out a Chaos Orb. And that Howling Mine and Relic Barrier go hand in hand together. He can tap his Howling Mine, that's what he's doing right now, and that means I'm only going to draw one. So Hank is drawing two each turn, I'm drawing one each turn, and he has an active library. So this is this is bad news for me. All I can do is just swing in. Because he's tapped out, he cannot activate his Chaos Orb, and now he's on 7 life. And remember, I play Direct Damage, so I play 4 Fireball in this deck. I play 4 Lightning Bolts in this deck, so I'm pretty confident that I can, um, I can beat him if I just, if I just draw my, my Direct Damage here. And Hank still needs to find an answer on the two creatures. He has 4 in hand, going to 6 meaning that he cannot activate his library yet. And there's a balance, yes. The nice thing about the balance is that it doesn't take into account your artifacts, which is, and, and enchantments, so that's a very good card for, for Hank in this matchup. And my creatures are gone. I'm showing how many cards I have in hand. And he has to discard two, keep three in hand. And he's probably going to tap his... Howling Mine again before passing turn, and he still has that Chaos Orb as well. So it's not looking great for me, but on the oh, he's e even copying his Chaos Orb. On the other hand, I mean, I'm playing with direct damage, he's on seven. So if I draw two fireballs, I'm set. If I draw, I choose to untap my manifold. Interesting, maybe I hope. 
I kind of hope that he chooses to tap my manifold then and not his Howling Mind so I can draw two cards. It's interesting. Um, I'm playing a Goblin Balloon Brigade and this is actually quite nice because Hank only has seven life and to spend a Chaos Orb on um, a Goblin is not something that you would usually do but considering he's now on six with me having exactly that's what i thought i'm playing a fireball playing with four fireball and i win the game and i win this matchup two to zero bam it's the direct damage here that's winning it's the fire elemental that's winning uh thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks if you'd like to see more games there's a link appearing right now and you can click on it to see more old school games for now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time.